From the archives of the greatest dramas in radio history, we proudly present Hollywood. The Radio Theater, starring Maureen O'Hara, Dick Haynes, and Barry Sullivan in Do You Love Me? Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. There's music in the air. And our gift to you is a special musical package filled with laughter and romance and decorated by three sparkling stars. Dick Hames of The Matchless Voice, lovely Maureen O'Hara, and Barry Sullivan. They appear in 20th Century Fox's screen hit, Do You Love Me? The story of a lovely woman who not only finds herself, so far as poise and beauty go, but finds two ardent and persistent suitors in the bargain. Here's act one of Do You Love Me? Starring Maureen O'Hara as Catherine Hilliard, Dick Hames as Jimmy Hale, and Barry Sullivan as Barry Clayton, with John McIntyre as Herbert Benham. In the suburbs of Philadelphia stands a dignified, vine-covered cluster of buildings known as the Hilliard School of Music. For a hundred years, each generation of Hilliards has devoted itself to the art of classical music and the advancement of the school. Today, the dean of the school is the last of the Hilliards, a serious young woman named Catherine, who at this moment has just concluded a report to the board of trustees. My dear, that's the funniest report we've heard in years. Thank you, Mrs. Crackle. You've worked wonders with the school, Catherine. Wonders. Now, uh, what can you tell us about the Christmas music festival? Well, as a matter of fact, Ralph and... Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, Mr. Wainwright and I have a surprise for you. Now, now, we all know that you two are engaged to be married. There's no need to be so formal. Thank you, Mrs. Crackleton. It has been rather awkward, particularly since, uh, well, since we're planning on being married right after the Christmas festival. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, getting back to the Christmas festival. As treasurer of the school, I'm delighted to say we have ample funds for the most ambitious concert we have ever undertaken. And since you've all approved my request for a trip to New York, I'm leaving this afternoon to confer with the distinguished composer and conductor, Mr. Herbert Benham. And I think I can safely say that Mr. Benham and his orchestra will accept our invitation. I'm on the rising vote of thanks to Miss Hilliard. Yes, and a pleasant journey. And... And a quick return. I shall miss you, Catherine. I shall miss you too, Ralph. I'll be back just as soon as I have arranged the program details with Mr. Benham. I'm sorry, miss, but there just don't seem to be any seats. I'll try the car ahead, conductor. Oh, sorry, but that's a special car. Barry Clayton's band. Oh, well, then I'll just stand in the vestibule. Thank you. Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't know you were leaning against the door. No seats inside? No. Well, you can't just stand. Come on in here. We've plenty of room. Why, thank you. Here, I'll take your bags. It's my Boy Scout training. Wolf Patrol. Well, have this. This will do splendidly, thank you. I, I, I think I'll just read for a while. A good book? Very. The influence of Bach on Wagner. Oh, you like music? Yes, intensely. Well, good, good. Oh, Dilly. Yeah? Tell the gang to pick up their instruments. We've got an audience. Huh? Oh, uh, put down your cards, boys. And get ready to pay off that bet, Mr. Dillon. Oh, uh, Miss, you wouldn't mind if we tried out a number, would you? Oh, no, not at all. I pride myself on being able to concentrate no matter what goes on around me. Oh, now, honey. Okay, boys, here we go. Let's see you concentrate now, Miss, I tell you. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Tell me, do you? Do I really mean all world to you? Do you get a glimpse of heaven when your lips meet mine? Tonight 
But I didn't like it. Fifty bucks, Barry. Come on. Relax. The bet's off. Oh, no, you don't. You said the first time we played that tune for a female customer, she'd melt like butter in the oven. I said the average woman would. This one here isn't a fair test. Look at her. She's one of the most average-looking dames I ever saw. Oh, no, she isn't, and I'll prove it to you. Madam, when you walk down the street, do men ever go... At you? They most certainly don't. There you are, Dilly. Ah, don't prove a thing. It certainly does. The hottest number in the world wouldn't warm up a dame like that. She's ice water. If a mosquito ever bit that gal, Dilly, he'd get double pneumonia. Hey. Hey, she's leaving. Well, let her leave. And the bet's off. <laughs> I don't think that tomato likes you. I'm worried to death. Come on, let's run through that number once again. how pleased they were when I told them you'd conduct the Christmas festival for us. After all, Herbert Benham, well, you're quite a prize for us. Well, thank you, Catherine. Now, tell me, what's the matter with you? Matter with me? Yes, what's wrong? I, I don't quite know. Herbert, I met a man on the train. What? Oh, it's not what you're thinking. Oh, Herbert, what's wrong with me? Well, I'm sure I don't know. Well, last night, after I checked in at the hotel, I walked around the block for over an hour. Many men went by, all shapes, all ages, but not one of them went... (whistles) at me. Well, should they? Could that vulgar, raucous leader of a jazz band be right? Am I ice water? Would I give a mosquito double pneumonia? Uh, Now, just a minute. Evidently, you met a low character on the train who reflected upon your ability to bring out the call of the wild. Is that your tragic tale? You think I'm being ridiculous. Oh, no, no. Your vanity was bruised, and naturally you rebelled. It's an awful admission, but you're right. Here, let me look at you. Well, it's sinful. What sinful? Why, the way you hide those pretty eyes of yours behind those ugly spectacles, and your hair pulled up in a tight knot on top of your head, your figure... All bundled up in this tailor-made atrocity. Catherine, have you ever thought of what you might look like? Why, uh... uh, Take off those glasses. Take off my glasses? Yes, and let down your hair. Come on, come on. There's nothing like letting your hair down. Ah. That's better. Now, uh, fluff it all out. Fluff it, fluff, fluff. Makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, uh, well. Look in the mirror. Oh. Now you behold merely the faintest possibilities. Not to exploit them is positively but, criminal. But how? When? I mean... Well, how should I know? But my uh, secretary would. Yes, Mr. Benham? Uh, Miss Peters, I'm turning Miss Hilliard over to you. Take her to your beauty salon, to your hairdresser, and uh, uh, take her shopping. I want Miss Hilliard to uh, rise and shine, if you know what I mean. Ah, uh-huh. ah. But the Christmas festival, Herbert, we've hardly begun oh, to... Oh, forget about it for a day, can't you? And just promise me one thing. When Miss Peters gets through with you, take another walk around the block. that I should flog that wolf? Oh, no, no, no. It's wonderful. Huh? Oh, never mind. I... I want to go to a nightclub. What one, lady? The El Sudan. Where Barry Clayton makes with the hot swing? Yes, where Barry Clayton makes with the hot swing. Do we pick up somebody else? No. A meet them there, huh? Maybe. Oh, that's no go at the El Sudan, lady. If you ain't got no guy inside waiting, no one going in with you, you're out. 
Oh, you mean I have to have an escort? Yeah, a boyfriend or your husband or somebody else's husband. They ain't particular, but a guy is a must. Oh, well, uh, uh, in that case, you'd better stop. Oh, I have an idea. That that man there standing in front of that restaurant. But, lady... Oh, don't go away. I'll be right back. Oh, I... I beg your pardon. Mm, that's all right. You like to look in restaurant windows, too, hmm? I've always been a bakery window fan myself. Oh, look at that roast duck in there. Me without a solid meal for almost two weeks. You've been hungry for two weeks? Hungry? I'm starved. All I do is stand in front of windows like this and drool. Well, how would you like to eat anything your heart desires? Oh, lady, would I? Good, then come with me. With you? Well, you can do me a favor, too. I want to go to a nightclub and they frown on unescorted ladies. And, uh... I'm to be your escort, is that it? That's right. Nothing more, nothing less. You're on. This I have got to see. The El Sedan, huh? One of Barry Clayton's fans. Why do you assume that? Well, anybody who goes to the El Sedan go to listen to that so-called sweet swing of his. As far as I'm concerned, swing musicians are crude exhibitionists. Oh, is that so? Well, uh, what about uh, the groaners? You know, the fellows who croon the words to the music... Maybe you like them, huh? Oh, I imagine they're about in the same class. Oh, fine. Fine. You're really going to enjoy yourself tonight. Well, you are now in the El Sedan. Is this table okay, lady? Why, oh, uh, you obviously can't go on calling me lady. My name is Catherine Hilliard. Oh, nice name, Catherine. But I think I'll make it kitten. You know, you're uh, quite a dish. Thank you. Now tell me, just why did you come here? Well, I'm from out of town, and I understand the El Sudan is quite the place to go. Now, what would you like to eat? Mm, I can't get my mind over that roast duck. Uh, well, then, if you call the waiter, uh, we'll... Well, what's happened to the music? Did Mr. Clayton get tired waving that baton of his? Sorry to interrupt the dancing, good people. Don't be alarmed and don't scream, but there's a burglar in the house. Yes, sir, the Jimmy Valentine of Stone, the crown prince of crooners, my pal, Jimmy Hell. Okay, Jimmy, take a bow. What are you standing up for? Because I'm Jimmy Hale. You are a crooner? Oh, a buck here, a buck there. A fellow's got to make a living in it. But you told me you haven't eaten for two weeks. I haven't. I'm on a diet. Seems they like us lean and hungry. Well, just don't stand there, Jimmy. Come on up here and bat one out for the folks. Oh, I'm sorry, kitten, but I'd better oblige. Here's a song I know Jimmy knows on account of we made the recording together. Folks, Jimmy Hell. <laughs> Jimmy's gal company while he takes care of those autograph others. Oh? 
A wonderful fellow, Jimmy. Wonderful. But uh, let's talk about us. Very well. Let's. Well, to begin with, I think you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. That's a very nice beginning, Mr. Clayton. Mary's the name from now on. Oh, I've got plans for us, honey. Big plans. How exciting. Oh, what are you looking for? A cigarette? Oh, oh no, no. Uh, just these. My eyeglasses. There we are. Your eyes bother you? No, not especially. I just wear glasses when I'm in nightclubs and when I travel on crowded trains. They prevent me from stumbling over loud-mouthed band leaders. Oh, no, no, you couldn't be. Not her, the girl on the train. Yes, Mr. Clayton, the ice water girl in person. Oh, please, look, I'll get on my knees. I'll, I'll, I'll fast ten days, I'll cut my throat. And deprive womanhood of your flattering speeches. Now, look, I don't blame you for hating me. But you've done a great deal for me. I'll make it all up. Every day, every hour, on the hour, I'll tell you how lovely you are, how charming, how... Uh... McGrone is back. Well, how are you, chum? Fine, fine. Would you mind, beautiful, if we drop this brash character in the side pocket and talk about us? Uh, excuse me, boss, but the customers are clamoring for your talent. Right away, Dilly. Now, uh, you're going to stay and dance? Perhaps. Well, just save a couple for me. Oh, James, I know you hate to see me tear away, but don't break up. I'll be back. No, I'll try to pull myself together. Always kidding. Well, I've got to hand it to him, kitten. A little while ago, he was a crude exhibitionist. Just a little bit of howling and you've joined the pack. How unkind, Mr. Hale. No, I'll leave the corny lyrics to Barry. He's got the market cornered in that department. Well, it was a brief evening, but a highly successful one. Thank you. What are you talking about? You're not leaving. Certainly. I wanted to prove something, and I have. Now, if you can get the check... No, it's on the, it's on the house. Professional courtesy. You know. Then I guess everything's been taken care of. Good night. Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Clients have to be escorted to their homes. That's rule number one of the union. <laughs> Come on, we'll get a cab. Tell me something, Jimmy. What sort of a man are you? Could just any woman have come along and met you the way I did tonight? No, not just any woman, kitten. What I mean is she'd have to be somebody pretty special. Like you. Oh, Am I special? You're wonderful. If you don't believe me, just look in your mirror. And somebody else agreed with me, too. That look in Barry Clayton's eye. Oh, brother. You know, I do think he rather liked me. <laughs> Certainly he likes you. But then he likes all girls, especially the ones that go with me. Are you trying to tell me that Barry Clayton paid attention to me just because I was with you? No, but it's a feud of long standing. If Barry knew where to find you, he'd be howling on your doorstep right now. But that isn't going to happen because I have no intention of moving over. This is all very interesting. Now tell me, whatever made you choose the profession of groaning? Uh, like some music, I'll turn the radio on. I asked you a question. Yeah, that's right. Why do I groan? Well, I told you before, it's a living just like anything else. The pay's pretty good and the work's not too hard. You see, all you do is... Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Tell me, do you? Do I really mean the whole world to you? Do you get a glimpse of heaven when your lips meet mine? Say goodbye. Oh, now the very least I can do is take you inside. 
Hey, our skipper. Oh, thanks, Mr. Hale. Uh, good luck. Now, I know a nice... I know a nice, quiet little corner in the lobby, Kitten. Sorry, but I'm going straight to bed. I've got a very busy day tomorrow. Oh, that's right. We have, don't we? Including breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I... I think I'd better tell you something right now, Jimmy. I'm engaged. Yes? Engaged to be married. <laughs> well, I'd be surprised if you weren't. But that's no reason to starve. Only groaners have to starve. Don't engage women eat. Very well, then, lunch. But just this once. You've heard of Herbert Benham. Oh, definitely. Hey, wait a minute. You're not engaged No, to... no, Jimmy. Not to Mr. Benham. But I'll be in his office all morning. Suppose you try me there at noon. Mm, if I can hold out that long. Good night, kitten. Good night, groaner. Do You Love Me, starring Dick Haynes, Maureen O'Hara, and Barry Sullivan, will continue in a moment. Here's your producer, William Keeley. We continue with Act Two of Do You Love Me, starring Maureen O'Hara in her original screen role as Catherine, Dick Haynes as Jimmy, and Barry Sullivan as his namesake, Barry. <laughs> It just goes to show what a little determination will do, and the right clothes, and the right hairdresser. In a matter of a few hours, the highly conservative Catherine Hilliard has become a creature of dazzling glamour, to whose charms Barry Clayton, the band leader, and Jimmy Hale, the crooner, have completely succumbed. It's the following morning now, and Catherine has just entered the office of Herbert Benham, the conductor. By Rimsky Korsakoff's beard, Catherine, it is you. Good morning. Let me look at you. Well, it's miraculous. Tell me all about it. You walked around the block. Oh, yes, and then I went to the El Sudan, and I made him squirm, and then I made him crawl, and then... Oh, Herbert, it was delicious. Mm, no doubt, but who squirmed and who crawled? That band leader. Oh, Herbert, I'm indebted to you for life. Well, what ideas do you have for our Christmas festival? Well, how about talking it all over at lunch? Hmm? Splendid. Oh, oh, I forgot I have a luncheon date. He said he phoned me here. After he got through crawling, he invited you to lunch? Oh, no, not the band leader. Another man. I met him in front of a restaurant. My, my. You did have a triumphant evening. Yes. He's a singer, Jimmy Hale. Of course you wouldn't know him. He isn't from our world, so to speak. Oh, yes, I know him quite well. And you'd be surprised how easy it is to step out of our planet onto his. Excuse me. Yes? Oh, put him on, Miss Peter. Now, hello. Who? Kitten. Uh, oh, oh, just a moment. It's for you, Kitten. Oh. Uh, hello. Yes, Mr. Hale. Meet you in front of Mindy's restaurant? All right, I'll leave right now. Goodbye. <laughs> he insists upon calling me Kitten. Hmm, I wonder what Mrs. Crackleton of the Board of Trustees would Oh, think. they must never know, especially Ralph. It would be disastrous. Then I have you in my clutches, haven't I? <laughs> oh, Herbert. And the first tribute I'll exact is that you go out and start having some fun for yourself. Oh, thank you. I'll be back here promptly at two. After all, we simply must start planning the program. <laughs> enjoyed lunch tremendously, Jimmy, but I really... Oh, have... now you've got plenty of time, kitten. Now, as I started to tell you... Oh. Well, how do you do? Oh, hello, Jimmy. Why didn't you tell me that Mr. Clayton was going to join us? <laughs> because I'm an optimist. I like to look at the brighter side. Look at me, beautiful. I couldn't sleep last night. I couldn't eat a bite of breakfast. I, I couldn't well, eat... Well, then a... why don't you find a nice little table in the corner and get some sleep? And I thought you two were good friends. Oh, but we are. Why, I can hardly bear to have Jimmy out of my sight. Especially when he's with you, Miss... Uh... <laughs> now, isn't that ridiculous? I can't seem to... Hilliard. Catherine Hilliard. Oh, sorry to barge in, Barry, but... Hiya, Jimmy. Oh. But Earl Williams is here. Wants some news for his column. Well, give him some news, Dilly. I'm busy. Yeah, okay. I'll tell Earl how you and the band took over Pittsburgh last Catherine, night. Catherine. Catherine Hilliard. What a beautiful name. Oh, now, just a minute, Barry. Jimmy, why don't you blow? Can't you see Miss Hilliard and I? Why, we're uh, inevitable. You tell him, honey. I just want to sit here and stare at you. Yeah. 
record in Pittsburgh, Earl. Every record. Yeah. But what I want to know is, who's the babe with Barry? Oh, some out-of-town tomato has got a crush on him. Yeah? Right. What's Jimmy Hale in with her for? Oh, well, you know, Earl. She's using Jimmy for kind of a bait. She came into the El Sudan last night with Hale and went hook, line, and sinker for the maestro. Oh, thanks, Billy. That's a nice little item. Oh, you might tell your boss that Jackson's here. Al Jackson, the music publisher? Yeah, he's in Mindy's office. Wants to talk to Barry and Jimmy about the new song. Oh, yeah, well, thanks, Earl. I'll tell him right away. But she was sitting right here, waiter. Miss Hilliard, what happened to her? She left. But didn't she leave a message for me? No message. Oh, this is awful. Jimmy, look, here's your chance to square yourself with me for life. You give me her address and phone number, see, and I'll appear on your radio program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Jimmy, you don't understand. I'm on the level. Now, what does a guy have to do to prove it to you? All right, all right. Just let me handle it. I'll talk to her. You will? Yeah, on our honeymoon. Be seeing you, chum. Oh, great. Billy, come here. Uh, yeah, come over Barry, here. What did Jackson have to say about the Forget song? Jackson. Right? Follow Jimmy Hale, see? Yeah. Don't let him out of your sight. I've got to find out where Miss Hilliard lives. Jimmy, what are you doing here in front of the hotel? Waiting to see you. I've been trying ever since you ducked out of Minnie's. Oh, but I... Oh, it's all right, really. True, I phoned you 20 times, only to be told each time that Miss Hilliard was not in. But now that you've made an appearance... You've been standing out here waiting for me? Well, eventually you'd have to come out. But it's cold, it's snowing. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. Thinking about you gives me that nice, warm feeling. Jimmy, I... Look, look. I know you're engaged to another man, but that's no reason to run out on a luncheon date. I had an appointment with Herbert Benham, but whether I did or not, I should never have consented to go with you. Oh, let's talk about it over a nice dinner. Hmm? I've already had a nice dinner. Let's take a walk. Oh, you should see Central Park with the snow coming down like this. Oh, kitten, it's near Christmas. You're supposed to love your fellow man. I do, collectively. Well, it couldn't be that you're Afraid? Afraid? Jimmy, I'm engaged. The man I'm going to marry is also associated with me at the music school. Our lives are inseparably bound together. Mm, how does Barry Clayton fit into the picture? He doesn't. Hmm. Oh, you're exasperating. And you're very pretty. Now, look, I promise to behave, and not for a moment will I forget that you're madly in love and engaged to somebody else. Oh, all right, but just a short walk. Mm, now you're purring, kid. Another world, Jimmy, here in the park. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I never used to think those pictures on the Christmas cards were real. Snow falling slowly, kids singing Christmas carols. You're cold? Oh, oh, no, no. I'm fine. Oh, look, there's even a moon. <laughs> Pretty wonderful, isn't it? Watch out for that moon, kid, and it's dangerous. And don't pay any attention to those stars, either. They're dynamite. Jimmy? Huh? I... I feel so strange. What is it? You never should have brought me here, you know. It's much too... Romantic? Bewitching. Chestnuts. Roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your nose Yuletide carols being sung by a choir Folks dressed up like Eskimos Everybody knows A turkey and some mistletoe to make the season bright Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow Will find it hard to sleep tonight They know that Santa's on his way He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh And every mother's child is gonna spy 
to see if reindeer really know how to fly. And so I'm offering this simple phrase to kids from one to ninety-two. Well, I was just going out. Hey, this way, fellas. How many of you bellboys are there? Oh, just four of us, Miss Hilliard. You see, we were told to give you a message. It's uh, kind of embarrassing, but I guess we got to tell you. What is it, please? You're lovely. You're charming. You're gorgeous. That's true. I love you. I love you. I love you. Get through. Sorry, Miss Hilliard, but we had to do it. Oh, that's all right. But now you can take the flowers and give them to your girlfriend. Or... We tried to tell Mr. Clayton it was awful corny. Oh, but... uh, when you go down to the desk, would you mind leaving word for me with the clerk? Just tell him if any messages come. I'll be at Mr. Benham's office. Well, it's a good thing you weren't here five minutes ago, Catherine. Ralph telephoned. Ralph? Yeah, he tried to get you at the hotel. You weren't in. Well, naturally, I was on my way here. Where were you last night? It seems he phoned last night, too. Oh, I... I was out walking with Jimmy. Well, as far as Ralph's concerned, you were with me. Do you understand? We, uh, were listening to composers at Malinsky's Farm in Connecticut. Well, Catherine, I had to tell him something. He trusts me. But not me. Of, of course he does. Oh, I'm afraid we really started something when I told you to rise and shine. Oh, Herbert, I'm in love. Terribly in love. Not, uh, not Jimmy Hale. Yes. I knew it. I knew something would happen the minute you fluffed your hair. What about Ralph? Ralph thinks I'm his friend. Oh, pardon me, Miss Hilliard. There are four messenger boys here. They insist on seeing you. Oh, well, have them come in. What in the world? You can't help them, Miss Hilliard. We'd lose our jobs if... Yes, I know, gentlemen. Just go ahead and get it over with. You're lovely. You're charming. You're gorgeous. That's true. I love you. I love you. I love you. Yes, true. Thank you. I, I, I sure am sorry, ma'am. You know, uh, during the war, this sort of thing wasn't allowed, and I never thought I'd see the day that I'd be wishing for another war. Well, come on, fellas. Jimmy Hale, huh? Well, I suppose a whirlwind courtship has its point. Oh, Jimmy didn't send those messengers. It was that other man. Other man? The band leader? Yes, Barry Clayton. Earlier today, it was four singing bellboys. Catherine, my dear, you are in a mess. A newfound love, an ex-sweetheart who doesn't know he's an ex, and a persistent suitor. Oh, Herbert, what shall I do? Well, obviously, the green light must be given to Jimmy, the red light to Ralph, and uh, for our dear, ambitious Barry Clayton. Oh, he's not I... so easily put off, believe me. Well, why don't you just phone him and tell him the truth? Of course. Yes, Mr. Benham? Uh, get Barry Clayton on the phone, will you? Oh, Miss Hilliard. All right, Barry. Uh, I'll see you at my hotel at 5 o'clock. Yes. Yes, goodbye. Well, I'm meeting him at 5, Herbert. Well, you can dispose of him by 5.30, but that still leaves us with Ralph. I just have to go home tomorrow and, and tell him. Good. Well, you're all straightened out now, right? Right. Then if it's not asking too much, suppose we sit down and think about me. After all, kitten, I have a concert coming up at the Hilliard School of Music. Hello? This is Mr. Benham. Who? Western Union. Uh, yes. 
He's ca- Would you mind repeating that, please? Yes, thank you very much. Miss Peters, Miss Peters, where are you? Yes, Mr. Benham. Uh, get a hold of Miss Peters right away. Tell her Ralph Wainwright's arriving from Pennsylvania any minute. He, he wants to surprise her. <laughs> Oh, it does look delicious, Catherine. Oh, here, have some orchid. Thank you. And what is this champagne oil you shouldn't have? I didn't. Room service sent it up in your name. Oh, well, just a slight sample of what's to come. Wait till the man from Cartier's gets here. From Cartier's, the jewelry store, but you must stop him. Too late, baby. I've already bought it. Bought what? Well, I'll give you a hint. It's in a gold setting with rubies. It's as big as a hunk of ice and has a deep blue color. Guess what? Oh, this is awful. Oh, no. That must be the man from Cartier's. Barry, please, don't go to the door. He mustn't find you here. Who mustn't find uh, you here? A man, a friend of mine from Pennsylvania. Well, I'd like to meet him. No, no, he, I, I mean, he doesn't know what's happened to me. I, I mean about us. I've got to tell him myself. You must go, please. Anything you want, baby, is okay with oh, me. Oh, no, no, not out that door. Oh, that's right. The other room. Use the fire escape and hurry. And uh, uh, what about us? Later, later. I'll tell you what. Meet me at Carter Holden's penthouse. It's right here in this hotel. He's throwing a cocktail party. All right, all right. I- in an hour, maybe. And don't be scared, honey. You tell that lug, whoever he is, that no one's going to push my future wife around. Fire escape. Hmm. Oh... Oh, it's just you, Herbert. A trifle wilted from waiting, but still recognizable. I nearly had a fit. I thought you were Ralph, and here I was, trapped with Barry Clayton. I don't see Clayton. He just left. The fire escape. Oh. Well, I thought I'd better be here when Ralph arrives and might soften the shock. Thank you, Herbert. You're still certain you want to go through with this? I've never been more certain of anything. Well, you'd better be in the bedroom, then, when he arrives. I'll welcome Ralph myself and break it to him as gently as possible. Oh, dear. What's this? Caviar and champagne from Barry Clayton. Oh, I'm afraid Ralph won't like this at all. I'll just have to sit... Oh, oh, excuse me. Hello? Jimmy. Oh, I've been hoping you'd call. Oh, I'd love to. But someone named Carter Holden is having a party, and I've promised Barry Clayton I'd be there... No, Jimmy, I don't want to go, but I must, and and I want you to take me. Oh, please. You will? I'll meet you in the lobby in, well, in an hour. Thank you, Jimmy. Goodbye, darling. Oh, Herbert, I'm so happy I could... Ralph. What'll I do? Oh, go on, disappear. Just leave everything to me. Courage, Benham, old fellow. Courage. <laughs> Why, Ralph. Hello. Herbert. Well, come in, old man. I just thought I'd drop over to welcome you. Well, thank you. Where's Catherine? Uh, Catherine? Oh, she's in the bedroom, cleaning up a bit. Uh, have a herring. (laughs) No, thank you. How about a glass of champagne? I guess you've forgotten, Herbert. I don't drink. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, Ralph, you and I are old friends. We have mutual interests, mutual ambitions. Uh, yes? Well, what I'm trying to say is that since Catherine came to New York, we've worked closely together and... I'm sorry, Herbert, but I don't follow you. Well, to come straight to the point, Catherine's in love with another man. What? Yes. From a chance acquaintance, they drifted unwittingly in love. I lied to you last night about being up at Malinsky's farm. She was with this other man. Herbert, if this is your idea of a practical oh, joke, no, I... no, 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 believe me. I, I'm dead serious. You see, in a sense, I've taken your fiancé away. That is, I've had uh, something to do with it. But, uh, what's this? Uh, what's what, old man? This card with the orchids. You're beautiful, you're gorgeous, you're lovely. Signed B. B for Benham. Oh, no, no, Ralph. You've got this all wrong. Or is it for no. Benedict, like in Benedict? No. No. And you can tell Catherine, if she has any explaining to do, she can reach me at the YMCA.
brief intermission, we'll bring you Act Three of Do You Love Me? Starring Dick Hames, Maureen O'Hara, and Barry Sullivan. Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act Three of Do You Love Me? Starring Maureen O'Hara as Catherine, Dick Hames in his original screen role as Jimmy Hale, and Barry Sullivan as Barry Clayton. <laughs> It's a few seconds later. Herbert Benham, the eminent conductor, has just conducted himself off the floor, while Catherine stands by, helpless but sympathetic. Oh, my goodness, Herbert, are you all right? Oh, I'm just fine. It seems I omitted one small point in my little talk with Ralph, the name of your newfound love. He thought I was the lucky dog. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're sure your jaw's all right? Oh, Herbert, but for you, I might have married that, that... That blue-nosed, pompous sack of cornstarch. Well, my dear, that's one down and two to go. Barry Clayton and Jimmy. You're meeting Jimmy downstairs, is that it? And he's taking you to the party so you can meet Barry? You see, it's all working out very well. I'd say there were two schools of thought on that subject, Catherine. But uh, have a lovely evening. You must see me sometime and tell me all about it. <laughs> Glad to see you. No, hello, Earl. Oh, uh, this is Miss Hilliard, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams is New York's most famous columnist, Kitten. How do you do? Seen Barry around, Earl? Barry? Oh, he's in there playing the piano. Our host put him to work. Want to talk to him now, Kitten? Uh, I think I'd better, Jimmy, if you don't mind. Run well, along. I'll wait right here. No, I, uh, I didn't expect to see you here tonight. Well, it was Miss Hilliard's idea. She wants to talk to Barry. Well, I always knew you were a good sport, and as long as I spelled your name right... I don't get it. Well, I want you to know there was nothing personal in it. Well, see you later. How goes it, Broner? Oh, hello, Dilly. Hey, I didn't think you'd be talking to Earl Williams. Why not? What goes on, Dilly? You, uh, didn't see his column? His column? What about it? Uh, oh, nothing, Jimmy. No, nothing at all. What's the matter? I just wanted to see you, Kitten. Alone. Oh, about Barry? I haven't had a chance to talk to you, to him yet, but I'm... I'm... Well, I was just reading the evening paper, Kitten. Earl Williams, Colin. Oh? Here. Thought you might like to read it, too. Well? If you notice Jimmy Hale's face turning red, it's because a beautiful lady from out of town was crazy to meet Barry Clayton. So she used Jimmy as a... Stooge at the El Sudan to get an introduction. But what Jimmy hasn't caught on to yet is that the lady has fallen but hard for the maestro. And all that's left for the groaner are groans. Those in on the know are very, very amused. Jimmy. Yeah? You, you can't believe that I'd do anything as contemptible as that. It isn't true. I, I did have reasons for wanting to meet Barry at the El Sudan. Then you used me as a stooge, huh? I didn't even know who you were then. You were just a man I, I picked up. Yes, yeah, that seems quite obvious. Oh, you know I didn't mean it that way. I met Barry once before and he ridiculed me and, well, I suppose I have been vain and silly, but, but what you don't know... Oh, no, what I know is enough. It all adds up. Every little trick. Well, how are you, Joe? Glad to see you. Did you tell him, Catherine? Did she tell me what? And I took an option on the lady, and she said yes. Barry! Well, that's great, pal. Exactly what we were just talking about. I'm tickled to death. She knew what she wanted, and she knew how to get it. Your understanding is overwhelming, Mr. Hale. Yeah. Why don't you go to the piano with Barry and jam out a couple of choruses of the wedding march? You might as well double-cross Mendelssohn, too. A wonderful suggestion. Perhaps you'd like to join the joyful chorus. Come on, Barry. Well, what's the matter with him? Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, that girl. What'd you say her name was? Catherine Hilliard, for the time being. You can put that in your column, pal, and this on your chin. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Oh, oh. What columnist was socked last night at... Oh, Hilliard. Catherine Hilliard, School of Music. Earl, what's the matter with you? Oh, darling, did he hit you so hard you're talking to yourself? Out of my way, baby. I've got to get to a phone. Have I got a story? Pennsylvania papers, please copy. Uh, sit down, Jimmy. Uh, you too, Mr. Clayton. I invited you to drop in because I thought you might both be interested to learn of Catherine's whereabouts. Now, where is she? I've trying to find Catherine her everywhere. gone back home. Just why she's gone home, I don't know. 
You see, the uh, board of trustees of the Hilliard School of Music has decided to get a new dean. I'm afraid the board's a little narrow-minded when it comes to crooners, band leaders, and uh, publicity in Earl Williams' column. If it wasn't for this hot-headed character... Oh, I suppose I invited her to the party. Gentlemen, uh, please, we're all to blame. If you're guilty, so am I. It was I who persuaded Catherine to burst her Hilliard school cocoon and emerge as a butterfly. You two gave her wings. Now it matters little to me in whose garden she'll finally light. But we must, if possible, prevent her from being permanently dismissed from the school. Yeah, but what can we do? A bunch of long hairs like that, they wouldn't even let Jimmy and me in the front door. Why don't we go through the back door, then? Very funny. Oh, that's too simple for you to understand. Look here, Mr. Benham, just how far are you prepared to go to help Kitten? Just this side of murder. Uh-huh. I have a concert to conduct at the Hilliard School tomorrow. I'm leaving in an hour, so if there's any little thing... All right, all right. Now, look, listen. You too, Barry. Now, here's my idea. If we can... gentlemen, all radical changes in art are born of inspiration and they're very often of strife. So in music there sometimes arises a difference of opinion. You've just heard the orchestra in a composition in the tradition of the classics conducted by your humble servant. I would now like to depart from the printed program and offer for your approval and judgment a composition in the tradition of modern popular music <laughs> conducted by Barry Clayton and sung by the eminent vocalist, Mr. Jimmy Hale. Oh, <laughs> you're a music and all Christmas thing. Oh, Mrs. Clayton, Mrs. Well, this is unprecedented. The man must be out of his mind. He's an insult to the board of trustees. Ever since that certain night When we first danced and dined out I've been wondering how I stand And now I've simply got to find out I'm prepared to hear the worst So speak your mind out Tell me, do you? Do I really mean the whole world to you? Do you get a glimpse of heaven when your lips meet mine? Mrs. Clayton. You'd welcome too, 
Young Rock is at that, aren't they? The young people are <laughs> cheering. Oh, I, I don't know what that young fellow's been sitting on for. Ladies and gentlemen, since both Mr. Clayton and uh, Mr. Hale seem to suddenly left our stage, may I thank you in their behalf. I'm sure that your response to their offering will help convince anyone present that the dean of the Hilliard School of Music, Miss Catherine Hilliard, committed no unforgivable sin in her recent uh, association with these two artists. <laughs> Dilly, where is she, Miss Hilliard? Did you find her? Don't stand there, Dilly. Where's Miss Hilliard? She ain't here, boss. What are you talking about? Miss Hilliard, she wasn't allowed to come to the concert. She's in her office packing, getting ready to leave town. Oh, well, that's all I want to know. Hey, Usher. Usher, where's Miss Hilliard's office? Administration building, it says. This is it, Jimmy. Yeah. What am I worked up for? Go on in, pal. You're the one she wants to see. Thanks, Jimmy. We'll be seeing you around sometime, Catherine and I. Oh, well, I'm not leaving just yet. I'll, I'll just wait out here. I, I'd like to wish Kitten good luck. Oh, that's very swell of you, chum. I'll bring her right out. Well? Where's Kitten? I said, where's Kitten? You want a Christmas present? Huh? Here. Barry! You mean she... Yes, go on in there. She's waiting for you, you groaner. Merry Christmas, kitten. Jimmy, oh, Jimmy, darling. Oh, your eye, Jimmy. Who hit you? Oh, Barry just hung up his sock. On me. Oh. I've got something for you, too. From me, darling. With love. Oh. Who says there ain't a Santa Claus? This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs>